when he said these things, something began to happen. I am the way. I am the way. To claim that there is only one way for the true and living God, there is something that no man or anything on the face of this earth can do. There's no other way to have a true relationship with God except through faith in Jesus. You gotta have faith in Jesus. The way is not simply, as I said, among many ways, but to God the Father. No one other than Jesus have paid the full price for our offenses against God. Now when you stop and think about the way, the way, we don't say, hey, which ways can we go to make this a little bit easier for us? I'm going to tell you something. You're going to pay a price when you serve Jesus. When you really serve God, because the Epistle Paul said this in Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. This is going to be the heaviest burden that you and I make on the face of this earth when we surrender our life to Christ. But I want to tell you something. When you get my age or older, you're going to look back and say, oh my God, Jesus, I'm so thankful. I, I, I cry almost every morning when I come here to pray because I'm so thankful what he has done in my life. Now, you may not believe that, but I'm going to tell you, you keep living. And you get here, you're going to say, my God, he saved me all these troubles. Yes. I was listening to the radio this week where some kid was doing 100 miles an hour on the Bay Bridge under the tunnel. A couple of people got killed and many people got injured. He made a bad decision. He made a bad decision to be doing it. Who does 100 miles on a bridge? And folks, see, the decision making that we make, we need to understand there are going to be repercussions behind every decision that God has allowed us to make. And no one other than him has paid the full price. We open the pathway to renew our relationship with Jesus when we ask, can we go that way? You see, it's not necessarily that you choose God. God chooses you. Now, I know the scripture says that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. But when you begin to stop and think of it, Jesus has destinated us to be the men and women of God that he has called us to be. Now, can other people come along? Yeah, it's, if it's in their hearts. Because, but one thing we need to understand, there are repercussions for the decisions that we make. Because of him, he provided the only way for us to find our highest purpose, and the fulfillment in our life. That's, that's what, you know what, you know what, Jesus doesn't want you to live. He wants you to thrive. Don't you know that? God wants you to thrive, people. He wants you to be all that you can be. That's more to every one of us than what we are today. But we have to be able to see it believe it, and then act on it. We can't just say it and do nothing about it. You can't just wish some things away. You've got to believe it and trust God that there is something bigger and better. Yes. Listen, I remember coming up uh, in the 80s and my wife and I, we were struggling. We were having some difficult times financially. And she said, we got to do better, John. I said, I know, but why? We got to work some more. Because we can't live like this. I can't eat just Teresa and Will. I got to have some real food. And that's all she knew how to make at the time. But I got tired of eating them eggs and the little sausages and stuff and tortillas. I said, I got to get some real meat in me. It wasn't long she was fattening me up, I'm telling you, man. It was the first time. Listen, when I, got, when I met my wife, I was 115 pounds. Now, that's a rail. I see some kids today and I see them, I look at them, I said, I can tell you exactly how much you weigh so much. I said, 120. He said, how you know? I said, oh, I know, son. I was that one time. I know exactly what you weigh. But I'm going to tell you, God has something bigger and better for each and every one of us if we follow his way. 
He is the only way. Now understand the proclamation. Look, it's almost like a parent. Yeah, have you noticed a parent when they say, uh, when the kids are small and they ask them, they say, why, why do we have to do this? Because I said so and we're going this way with your life. Until you get grown enough to go and fend for yourself and then you make your own decisions. But when you're in that household, how many know you don't rule and reign? You're under somebody else's household. They're paying the mortgage, the water, the garbage, the cleaning, everything. You know, it just keeps going. The, the, the PG&E, the, the property taxes, the insurances for the house, the insurances for the cars, trying to feed you, taking you to school. It sucks the life out of you, don't it? I know. I raised you. They came and they left and they came back. <laughs> I know how that works. I get it. I get it. And it can be tough. I'm going to tell you something. And people talk about how tough it is. And listen, I know it's tough all over the world and whatnot. But try living in California. They're trying to run us out of here. They, listen, people that's coming in here, if they don't know what they're coming into, guess what? They, they might as well pack up and go back. Because California will beat you down. The and I love California. But I'm telling you, people look back and say, oh, those were the good old days. Yeah, they were the good old days. But things were still as expensive as they are today for us. Because we didn't make the salaries that the people are making today. You know, I, I was telling my kids, I said, listen, I, I didn't even make $100,000 15 years ago after I retired. And I was the superintendent. And they start people off with 100000 And young people say, there ain't no money. I need a lot more than that. What? what? I, listen, I, I listen to you pastors who's telling me how much money they make and they say it ain't enough. And they're making more than me. I said, remember this, son. Ministry ain't for the faint heart. Faint of heart. You ain't in this for the money. If you in this for the money, you, you going to die. More ways than one. And so when we stop and think about this, we got to know that Jesus is the way. Jesus, he goes on to say, Jesus is the truth. Not just a party of the truth, a part of the truth, but the whole truth. Now I'm going to tell you something about the truth. The truth never changes. Never. The truth never changes. Have you ever been around somebody who told a pack of lies that you always, you hear them say, man, you're a pack of lies. And what they're saying is that you can't keep up with your story. Because one thing about a lie, it perpetuates itself and it begins to be a bigger lie. And they add on to it and it's another lie. But the lie keeps changing. But the truth remains the same. Amen. It never changes. God's word never changes. It is the truth. Yes. That's why he say, first of all, I am the way. Hey, follow me. I am the way. Not me. Not John with us. Jesus is the way. And then he says, I am the truth. Yes. There's none other like me. You can't come into the kingdom of God without me. That's like saying, you can't come into a man or woman's house without their permission. You can't just walk in and unannounce. Back, let me tell you, back in the day where I was coming up in the sticks of Carolina, what we would do is just, uh, every time I would go back to North Carolina, my wife, my sister would tell me, John, go on up there and visit them. Go, I said, girl, I ain't seen them folks in 10 years. I don't care, they would love to see you. And you know, like, like a little brother, I, I would go up there and knock on her, hey, John. And now she tells me, hey, I, I said, hey, how's so and so? She said, you better not go up to them people's house. I said, oh, wh when did that change? Oh, they will shoot you. You better call and ask, can you come by? I, I said, how's so and so? She said, I don't know. I, I ain't seen them people in years. Now the tables done change. You can't come into nobody's house without being invited. But Jesus is inviting us by saying, first of all, I want you to know that I am the way. Secondly, I want you to know that I am the truth. Yes. The truth never changes. 
And you want to find out the truth? Talk to another kid and ask them something about something that is of importance to them. And then turn around, wait five minutes later, and ask them the same thing. You'll find out whether they are truth takers. They'll say yes. Here it is. And it's, it's the same answer they're telling the truth. Because they ain't going to remember that right there. They might, but they ain't going to lie to you. They're going to say, so did this right here. And they, uh, listen, my little granddaughter, she tells everything. <laughs> everything in detail. Here's what we done today. GP, we went here. We did this. We did this. I ate this. I, I played here. And I said, oh, you exhausted me just for what you're telling me. It's based on the truth. See, and that's what Jesus do. Everything about Christ and his message is true. Remember this about the truth. The truth is always absolute when it comes to Jesus. It's unconditional. It's unchanging. And more importantly, it's conclusive. That's the way God made it. Because he doesn't lie. It is always the same. I don't care how much you read this word of God, it's the same. You see, the truth remains the same, and you cannot fabricate it. You cannot fabricate it. I cannot say. Remember years ago, I never will forget this. Oprah Winfrey had a show, and she was on there talking about the Lord. And she was saying, there's many ways to come to God. And there was a woman that stood up and said, oh, no, Oprah, you are wrong. There is only one way to come to God, and that is through Jesus Christ, the Son. And I said, that was the boldest statement that that woman could have said on national television. And she shut her down because that's what the scripture says, right? I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what he said. He says this right here. You see, truth is universal. Remember this. For all people, in all situations, for all times. Think about this right here. There's a few things that are universal. Number one, I put on the top of the list, is, is, is the truth. Secondly, a smile is universal wherever you go in the world. What does a smile mean? I put my smile on. My brother used to always tell me this. Don't, don't smile at me. Don't, don't, don't do that. You know, they're going to be real nice to you when you smile. I said, that's my plan. When I go up and talk to somebody, <laughs> I want them to know that I'm a friend. Listen, when I go into DMV, have you ever gone into DMV? The people are ready for battle. They, will, they are ready to take you down. I do everything possible not to go into DMV. They used to be, they used to be, now I haven't been in there in many years, but they used to be some of the meanest people it was. So I would always go up to the, hey, how you doing? You having a good day? I'm trying. I know it must be tough, huh? And I can you know what? You cannot, you cannot be mean to somebody if you're constantly smiling at you. And they're not doing it pretentiously. They're doing it because they really want to know your day. Now, the smile is universal. So the truth is universal, a smile is universal, and a thank you is always universal. There's few things in this world that are universal. The truth, a smile, and thank you. And how many of you know that most people that cut off the last one, they don't even know what thank you means. You can't even hold a door for anybody anymore and let them pass, and they don't say nothing. They just walk right through it, and I say, I'm going to slam the door back into the place. But I can't do that because I'm the one who old, old, opened the door for them, right? That's my stuff. But Jesus said he is the light, the fact. Remember this. The fact that the supreme truth is revealed through Christ. True and lasting spiritual life is available only through his life, death, and resurrection. That's the supreme truth and life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. For those who accept his life as true are willingly laying down their life and yielding their leadership authority to him. That's what the truth is. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then one specific thing that God has given all of us which in some case makes us unique or very special in so many ways are very much the same. 
that God gave us a gift. Listen to this. God gave us the gift of making choices. That's a bittersweet ordeal, isn't it? He gave us the gift to make a choice. Have you ever looked at people's lives and you say to yourself, how did those people get there? And so I saw this guy the other day. He had, I, I guess they, what you call those tall beers, they, their 40s, what, what the, I, I don't know what, what they are, I mean, I don't drink. They, but they said, uh, he was out there drinking one of the tallest beers it was. He said, hey man, can you spare some change? I could, but I'm scared you might buy another beer. Uh, if you want something to eat, I'd be more than happy to buy that for you. But, you know, you're there drinking up the beer. Why, why am I going to continue to help you when you don't want to help yourself? So, God, and I'm not being mean. I'm just saying that we have to be wise in the choices that you and I make. The choices we make will be a mirror image of our decisions. Because we're going to look back over that. And you're going to, have you ever looked back over things in your life and said, man, that was a good choice I made. Wow. Maybe, maybe you had children and you said, man, that was a good choice I had. I'm so glad for that, those kids. Or you might look at them and say, I haven't quite made up my mind yet, but I'm hoping I get there. One thing we must understand, Jesus wanted us to learn how to communicate with him effectively. Most of that comes from a time a personal prayer. Give me a couple more minutes. For most of you, that may sound churchy or religious, but we need to understand that prayer helps us not only to increase our faith, but to emotionally stabilize our emotions. It really does. Let me, let me tell you how. Prayer will help us to act with empathy, but not with impulsivity of our emotions. Now, how does this all dive in to the way, the truth, and the life? Because this is the real deal. But a lot of us make decisions based on impulsivity, and we do it right away. And then we have, like, buyer's remorse. What have I done? Oh, I can't change that. You know, have you ever bought something, and then you got it home, you said, oh, man, this is not what I wanted. And now you got to go and let's change it. And they may not take it back. You can go back to Costco and they'll take anything. But, you know, Costco ain't uh, some other store. Uh, and some of those other stores, it's not Costco. For, for the most of you, that may sound, again, churchy. Prayer will help us to act with empathy. Prayer will help you to lead the spirit, lead by the spirit and not by our emotions. Now, folks, let me say this right here. There's a big difference in leading by the spirit or being led by the spirit as opposed to being led by emotions. Emotions are good at times, but emotions, they come and go. The Spirit of God will stay with you. You follow me? The Spirit of God will stay with you. Emotions are temporary, but the Spirit of God, with the Spirit of the Lord, there he will be. You can usher in the Spirit of God the moment that you say, Lord, oh, I just sense your presence. I thank you, Lord. And you begin to just praise him and thank him, and something begins to happen. Our emotions should not be the anchor of our decision making. And so let me just leave this right here with you because I think it's so apparent and so, it's so important that we understand that. You have one way, one way. And folks, let me tell you something. You and I, we only travel in this one time. We don't get a chance to travel this road again. You hear me? You don't get a chance to travel this road again of life. We travel this one time. We have to make good this one time. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. You can change it anytime you want to. Or you can sit there and you can feel sorry for yourself and ask him, Lord, bring somebody along my way to get me to the next place. And God may do that, but you're still going to have to do the work. Right. It's not just going to happen. It's like, you know, look, I love to eat. But I don't like getting big. I don't like my clothes not fitting me. But I love to eat. I tell you, I can eat anyone in here under the table. I'm telling you, I can. Uh, but I, I just made a decision. that I, I, I Listen, I know what it is. But someone once said, I read in a book, 
If you get your eating under control, you can control anything in your life. And I said, what? What? Really? But I like to eat. I, I heard a woman once tell me, she said, I'm never going to stop eating. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to eat myself to death. I said, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Looks like you're already doing that. You're working on it right now. Look, and look, I, but, and, and how many of you know, and we, we don't talk about this a lot because it's so personal. But, but look, that's the tough thing to do, to deprive yourself away from food. <laughs> because food is confident. But it can be a devil too, right? It ain't the food, it's what you eat and how much you eat. And you know what I used to say? Man, I, I eat healthy. Yeah, but I ate a salad for five people. You said, how did you eat all that salad? That's all I'm eating. Yeah, you can gain weight on salad. Depends on what you put into it. So somebody once told me, look, if you want to eat and learn some things, it's like this right here, right? Get a small plate. I said, small plate, but I'm going to go back about 10 more times. I said, no, you have to manage that. It's like sin. We have to realize if sin is beating us up, why are we continue getting the same results? Let me leave this one other thing with you. Satan comes along, and he always does this. He reminds me and you of our past. Have you ever felt that way? That you felt like the enemy reminds you of your past. I want you to know something, and I've said this on many occasions. Remind him of his future. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Satan reminds you of your past. Remind him of his future, because he ain't got long. Amen. He ain't got long. Folks, we got to go somewhere. We got to thrive. We got to trust God. We got to understand that if you don't remember anything here today, remember that he is the way, the truth, and the life. You want to have a fulfilled life? Don't get off the road. Stay on the way. Listen, believe God for what he says in your life. He has the very best plan for your life. And thirdly, listen, believe that he is your life. He's telling us all that in three major words. I am the way. John, I'm the way for you. John, I'm the truth for you. John, I am your life. I got it all laid out for All you have to do is make the right choice. Would you stand with me this morning? Hallelujah. Make the right choice. Glory to God.